So this is the ViewSonic M series. We are looking at the M2 today. We're going to do a quick unboxing for you. Um, quite a lot of stuff inside the box. Um, quick instruction guide there as well. Inside you've got all of these accessories. So you've got various cables including a USB-C and that can actually go in the back of the unit here and also underneath the unit. Um, also underneath the unit you've got unusually a Wi-Fi dongle um, which goes in a little slot here it's a little bit fiddly to get off but once you're in and slot it in um, it's in there for good you've also got um, a second USB-C port there which is good for Android wired connections as well as connecting to other sources like with a USB such as a laptop for example um, also uh, in the box you get a carry case, um, it's very small, portable, um, usual thing, um, plenty of space for the cables as well. It comes with a European power supply as well as the UK power supply which you've got in plugged in now. You've got your remote control and this comes with uh, batteries too. Um, it does have a voice activated system on there but it's not quite clear how to use that from the instructions and doesn't seem to be much in the user manual for it either so um it's one to check before you purchase it so there's some decent connections at the back you've got the hdmi you've got a usb 3 audio out plus usb c and micro sd card there and um, this particular unit is actually quite heavy for an ultra portable projector they're normally around 500 grams if they've got a battery in them 600 maybe this doesn't have a battery in by the way so it only runs on mains power but it still weighs 1.3 kilos um, that's mainly because it's got Harman Kardon speakers on them which are two times three watts each it does have a kickstand on the bottom as well um, it goes up to that level there it does have three feet on the bottom and um, so if it is going fairly low it does have a tendency to rock a little bit so you might need to just level it out so this particular model's got vertical and horizontal keystone correction plus it's got four corner adjustment on it as well so if you've got corners that are higher like we've got here you can adjust those when you turn off the keystone it, uh, or try and change it manually it automatically turns off the auto keystone correction so Currently also vertical keystone corrections on. If I just move the stand down, you can see it's not quite flat to the wall and it quickly automatically changes to parallel. So if we then want to have a look at doing it with the horizontal uh, and vertical keystone correction, if we move it to the left, let's say you want to project from a bedroom table or what have you, then you could potentially project project like this obviously you can see it's completely skewed with the horizontal keystone correction you can flip it so it brings it back to normal you've also got a four corner adjustment and then you can manually do it and through the diagrams it's a fairly straightforward process so it's actually got quite a good setup um, there aren't too many projectors that do have the vertical and the horizontal keystone correction on so the ViewSonic M2 has a throw ratio that at 2.4 meters back, it will give you a 1.7 meter wide image. Um, so 2.4 meters um, gets you to about here, uh, and that's your sort of size you're gonna get from a projector like this. So the issue is it's, it's not really a short throw projector, so if you're short on space, it might not be the ideal projector for you, you might be better off going for a shorter throw solution um, but if you do have a large room and want a large cinema screen image then this would be an ideal solution. So just to take you through the settings that we've got, we've got the Aptoid menu, uh, all the various apps are then downloaded into the App Center and you can control your files through the file manager, screen mirroring for smart TV so straight from your device whether it's a smartphone a laptop or an ipad or android tablet and then 
you've got various different settings. So if we go to the settings menu first, you've got your standard network settings where you can set up your Wi-Fi so you can connect directly to the internet from the projector. Then in the basic settings, you've got the usual language and then all your keystone correction systems. And then in the advanced settings, you have the various different options on power. Uh, so you can have eco mode and you can even turn it on with a sleep timer. Um, so there's quite a few useful features in there. You can do remote firmware upgrades for this as well, which is always useful, but it's a fairly basic menu system. So looking at the file management menu, you can select this to either download content from a USB or micro SD card in the back here, or you can use the local storage on the device itself. And then going back to the home menu for a second, you've also got the screen mirroring option. And there you just basically, whether you've got an Android or an Apple phone, you just follow the instructions and it, with Android, it's a quick smart view. And um, with Apple, just connect to the same network and then find the projector on the network and then you've got full screen mirroring from your tablet or phone and you can even do it from some laptops as well where you cast it straight from a Windows 10 laptop. And moving on to the um, App Store, so this is like a smart TV with App Toys, so this is quite common across most of the latest um, smart TVs and also ultra portable projectors, so if you see App Toy TV that's what it means. So you've got Plenty of choices and um, the usual things you'd expect on a smart TV. So you've got the likes of Netflix and uh, YouTube, BBC iPlayer, um, it's even got various sports channels. And then the usual things that you would see. Well, it's interesting as well, you've got music. So with it having the Harman Kardon speakers in, you could just launch Spotify and use the projector as a Bluetooth speaker at the same time. There's also uh, Android, uh, Google Chrome app that you can download so you can have the internet on your projector. You can get keyboards, wireless keyboards with integrated mouse, mini keyboards, which are quite useful as well for this kind of thing. And you connect those directly to the projector. So to get into any of the apps that you've downloaded from the Aptoid Center, you just go into the App Center. We've downloaded YouTube, which is called Smart YouTube on this Aptoid TV. And once you go into it, we've obviously already connected to our network. With it having Har Harman Kardon speakers on it, it's a good test of the sound playing a music video through it. 